For today's how-to, we'll be looking at our first non-Adobe program and one of my personal favorite programs while I talk about using nothing but the base models that come in Smith Micro's Poser to make some ghastly monsters. I'll say up front that this won't be a tutorial on how to get around in Poser, but if people want videos on that, please by all means let me know. I can always talk about Poser. So for the purposes of this video, I'll be using the Ryan model that came with the software way back when I bought Poser 8. He and the female base model Allison make for great starting points for these kind of projects in my experience. So once you've opened your model, I tend to start with the FBM or the full body morph. These are shortcuts made to speed up the process of modifying the model, found by selecting the body section of your model, as opposed to the hip, which is usually what will be automatically selected when you bring in a model. These are controls to manipulate the full body, upper and lower torso, chest, arms slash hands, glute and hips, and leg slash feet. Depending on the kind of monster you want to make, you'll have different things you'll need to work with here. For my example, I wanted a cave dwelling of crafty and horror, but didn't have any specific designs in mind beforehand. As such, I mostly experimented with the different properties for the design, until I got a more solid idea of what kind of look I needed. This included making it generally very emaciated and gaunt and thin to get across the alienness and the sickliness that my idea was going for. Though there are controls that could have gone the other way, and I could have made it very muscular and bulging instead. It's really up to what kind of monster you want to make. Under all these properties, there's a drop down menu which you can change the settings for these controls. Under those settings, you can change the limit on what you're changing. In the case of what I was doing, I did this for the nails, so instead of a limit of two, I could change it up to five, which let me make the monster's nails considerably longer. Though it should be noted that those limits do exist for a pretty good reason. So try not to make your model go too crazy. Once you have the basics, it's time to move on to more specific changes. To do this, we'll start selecting the body parts we want to deform. There are a few ways to make these selections, the first being the list up where you'll see Ryan's name. Where you see Ryan is the currently selected model, and to the right of that will be the part of the model that's currently active. Click on that list, and you'll be presented a full list of all parts of the current model. Alternatively, and arguably much more efficiently, you can just select the parts by clicking on them. By default, you'll have the translate tool active, which will let you do this. Hover over your model until the part you want to use gets a red outline, and click. When you've picked your section, the properties you can work with will change. Where I previously had the FBM settings, I now have more specific transformation options for the part I'm working with. In my case, I started with the arms. I personally, then and start playing around with the X, Y, and Z scale options. Thanks to how the models in Poser work, extending, say, a shoulder will usually cause the other parts of the arm to move, although there are occasions where that can get finicky and weird things will happen. I then continue doing this for the other limbs, going through each and every section. I feel like the design would benefit from me changing, saving the head for last in this case. So as you might have seen, everything on a model will have individual individual transformation options. With the heads of models like Ryan and Allison though, there are a lot of options to customize things. You can change their ethnicity, their expressions, the shapes of their heads, and use preset phonemes or the thing your mouth does when it's making sounds. It's the shapes that I'll be tinkering with here. I tried to go with a gone look that I'd set up with all the body alterations I did to that point. Again, your mileage may vary depending on what kind of design you're going for, and these same things I'm exaggerating here can be done far more subtly for some variety in your scene's characters in less monstrous productions. But that's not what I'm doing here, so back to the horror show.
Once all of this has been done, we get into the tool I'm just now trying to really get a hang of, the Morph Tool. You can activate the Morph Tool by clicking the small hand icon with a pointing finger in your tools palette, which will then open up the Morph window. By default, this will start on the Combine window with a list of all sections of the model. In less Lovecraftian circumstances, this lets you more directly morph every aspect of a model's features you could want, including locking your transformations, setting limits on how exaggerated things can get, controlling how your cheeks work, expressions, etc. For what I'm doing though, I'm gonna hop over to the Create tab of the window instead. This has controls for different types of direct manipulation, from pushing and pulling the polygons of your model to smoothing them out. You can change what your alterations will be relative to, either the model surface or your screen. You can also choose how soft the brush you're using to manipulate things will be how wide it is, and how intense the effect will be. For what I'm doing, I gave him some fangs by pulling on his teeth. Once all of those were set, I then up the custom morph property at the top, which would change how much your changes will show. Putting it higher, for instance, made his fangs get much longer than I originally made them, stretching them out, and I really like that effect. Once you've finished your morph, close the morph window and all of your changes will apply to your model. The next time you open that tool, you won't be able to undo what you previously did with Command or Control Z. However, if you don't like the changes you've made and you have I've accidentally closed the window, just click on the band-aid icon in the window, which is the restore tool, and start dragging and it'll let you completely remove changes to the model's mesh. After all of that's done, you now have your monster. While this video isn't going to be covering them, you can then go on to improve the monster even more by adding other props and moving over to the materials window to give it different textures. You can also change up the lighting and actually give the monster a pose to give it more of a sense of wrongness. If anyone wants videos on those topics, by all means let me know because, as I said at the top, I would love to go into this program more. It's hands down one of my favorite 3D programs and it's got a ton ton of utility. As always, I hope you've all learned something and enjoyed yourself doing it. If you have any questions, thoughts, or other feedback, you can let me know with a comment down below. You can also like this video and share it around, which helps with Google's rankings. And I'm planning to be back here every Friday, so be sure to subscribe for more awesome content. Have a great day, everyone.